here at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Um, as always, I want to start with a shout out. I've been giving shout outs to teachers and to parents, but I want to give a shout out today to students who I know are hanging in there and stretching themselves in ways they did not expect to stretch themselves. And I'm also hearing lots of stories about students looking out for each other. So we really appreciate you and you have our gratitude and I'm thrilled that we have four students with us today. Um, I want to welcome everyone to Education Now. This is a new initiative of the Harvard Graduate School of Education where we talk honestly and candidly about issues related to the pandemic, to the pandemic, to leading and living and educating in this time of the pandemic. We hope that these conversations and your questions um, will generate valuable ideas and insights, and we really encourage you to submit your questions throughout. Um, this broadcast, and we will spend at least five minutes, maybe 10 minutes at the end of the broadcast, trying to field some of your questions. And you can submit questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Um, in this episode, I am thrilled to have these four high school students, and I want to introduce them in an alphabetical order. Um, and I'm going to ask you all to wave um, when I say your name, so everyone knows who you are. I'm not gonna use last names to protect the students' privacy. Um, please join me in welcoming Usmi, um, who is from Pleasant Town, California. Hi, Usmi. Who is in 11th grade um, at Foothill High School um, in Northern California. Uh, Maya is from, hi Maya, is from Newton, Massachusetts. She's in the 10th grade at Newton North High School. Samia is from Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts in the 11th grade at Cambridge Ringe and Latin High School where my kids went, proudly went. And, Tar and, Taru and Tarun is from Boulder, Colorado. He's in the 12th grade at the Fairview High School. Welcome to the four of you. We are thrilled to have you here. Let me um, jump into this. You know, everybody's lives have been upended, including yours. A lot of the normal routines have been disrupted. I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about what your days are like, what's been hard during your days, what's maybe positive during your days, but give us a sense of your days. And I was just gonna ask you, we'll go in, in alphabetical or us me, if you wouldn't mind kicking us off. Yeah, for sure. My um, average day now looks a whole lot different than it did just about a month ago. Um, I do get a lot more sleep though, so that is something I'm grateful for. I get to sleep in, which isn't something that I could do before, and um, I'll spend maybe till 4, 5, 6 p.m. just doing homework online assignments, and just to kind of keep myself sane, I'll, I have actually been spending more time in the kitchen. So the other day I baked some cookies, they're really good. Nice. And I've been uh, making it kind of a goal to call at least one or two friends each day, just to kind of check in because I don't get to see them like I normally would. Yeah. What are you finding hard? Are the things you're finding especially hard? I think it's just the idea of online remote learning, which is just different, but my teachers have been incredibly supportive and they're just an email away. So it's just definitely made this transition easier having teachers that are just very communicative. Yeah, great, well, thank you. Maya, how about you? Um, For me, I'm also trying to keep sort of a basic schedule for every day or every week. So I'll try and wake up at 8.30, I have an alarm. Uh, I'm not really sort of a person who's usually inclined to sleep late. So waking up early has been sort of normal for me. Um, but I'll spend like an hour get, <laughs> kind of getting dressed and enjoying myself, like listening to music. And then I'll work on my schoolwork until three. And then I'll allow myself to just kind of do whatever I want. Um, I've been working on a lot of art projects because I really like to draw and I'm not very good at it, but I've been practicing. So um, that's been really fun. That's cool. um, something that's been hard though, is it's really difficult to motivate um, to keep to that schedule. Uh, I at first had a very rigorous schedule where it wasn't really allowing so much leeway for me. But um, I realized that having every day be the exact same is just mind numbing. So it's been really helpful for me to have that point after three o'clock where I have just time to do whatever I want as, yeah. as I think of it. Yeah, you've been able to stay in touch with your friends? 
Um, for the most part, yeah. Some have been more reachable than others. I think it's just based on people's situations. You know, um, a lot of people who I see every day who are just acquaintances um, from class, I, I don't see as often, which has been a shift because, you know, when I'm going to school, I'm sort of forced to interact with everyone in my class, whereas now it's sort of three distinct people who I talk to on a regular basis and no one else. Yeah, yeah. So Mia, how about you? You want to tell us a little bit about your day? Uh, sure. Um, like Maya said at the beginning of quarantine, I really had like that schedule, that like structure of me. Okay, you know what? Uh, you're going to wake up at seven or eight a.m. You're going to do this, be productive, and try to do like some stuff to keep you sane. Um, I personally love to write poetry, so like I would say, okay, you know what? Each day, write a poem or do something, or like listen to music that may inspire you. But it has been really, really difficult as like time went by because like, um. Just the overall fact that you're just like locked in your house and you cannot really do anything else than just like being in the house or like just the pressure of just being like cut off from like your family, your friends, not having the same habits and like everything just shifts. So I would say it's kind of difficult to keep that structure every single day and like be able to be as productive as you would want to. Tarun, Tarun you want to add something here? Sure, yeah. So I'd say because I'm lucky to be in Boulder, a lot of wildlife, a lot of nature. So I start my day off with a run or a bike because I think that just having that mental clarity really makes a difference to start off that day. And then we have webcam meetings with some of our teachers. And I think that just having that personal touch to see our classmates' faces and see our teachers really has made a huge difference for me and for a lot of my peers. And in that regard, I think that this is great for teaching because I think I read some Washington like street post journal that 70% of parents now feel like teachers should be paid more. And I think that this has really brought to light all the work that teachers have done. And I'm super happy for that. And then I think another good thing is I've been spending a lot more time. Be like a hundred percent by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder where that 30% is going right now for sure. And then in terms of just spending a lot more time with my family, I think that's been a huge plus because a lot of time with work schedules and school schedules, I haven't been, able to spend as much time with my family throughout high school but now I go on daily hikes with my dad and that's been really fulfilling for me and then one drawback is definitely not being able to see friends like I'd say that that was a huge highlight for me at school just being able to see so many faces and talk to people in person yeah. and sure like snapchat and instagram keeps us connected but it's really just not the same yeah what are the, what are the rules around seeing friends do you ever see you see friends and socially distant? And yes. Social so distant I, yeah, yeah. I think it just varies parent by parent. Like my parents are pretty strict about it and don't let me hang out with friends. But I know some people are letting their kids go out to do outdoor activities like fishing or hiking with masks included. Well, I'm, I'm going to shift gears a little bit because I want to talk about this issue of online learning that one of you, that one of you, um, that one of you mentioned. Maybe this time we'll start with with Samia. I'm I'm just wondering what your experience has been learning online, and I, you know, ho hope you'll be as candid with as as you're comfortable with. I mean, things about it that have been, um, you know, I you know things you that have been helpful. Maybe you, there are ways in which your learning has increased. Also, things that have been hard. Samia, um, want... online learning has definitely been interesting in a sense like the beginning was really hard because like there was like no organization I will have like two to three meetings with different teachers in the same day sometimes the times will overlap and I would not be able to attend the class because I had one another at the same time so it was kind of messy I would say for the first two to three weeks but after that we shifted to that like um, we have a schedule now we have one period each day and the Wednesday is kind of like our day off if I could say that so say like that so it's kind of like more structured and also my teachers has been really supportive, like in the sense that, that if you're not able to attend a class or if you're working or if you're fasting, I know that we're in the Ramadan right now, or if you have like any other issue, you can just like shoot them an email and explain, okay, I have that difficulty and they will extend the deadlines for, for us. Or one thing that has been really helpful are also that they have office hours. That's something that they put on, like they have hours like before um school I would say or like even after school so like you can jump in with them and like they can like help you with the homework or the classwork 
So that has been really helpful. That's kind of like the extra support that people might need and might like don't have time during the day to go to class. They can access that. Even the weekends, some of my teacher has given us like their actual phone numbers so we can call them sometimes if we're really, really, really like um, under pressure. So yeah, that has been really helpful. I would say the first week was not good, but like now it's kind of like going into place. Yeah. Are you feeling connected to your teachers and, and you're still part of the community in some way or? Um, I would say yes, in a way, because like we have, we see them kind of every day. So like we have video, it's not the same, of course, but like it's definitely better than nothing. It's yeah. what we can do right now. And yeah. they have done their best to keep that connection as well with us. Yeah. Maya, ask me, Tarun, any of you want to jump in here? Your thoughts about this? Yeah, go ahead, Maya. So um, I think it actually varies, at least for me, teacher to teacher. I'm not going to call out any of my teachers, yeah, um, yeah, but I do actually want to shout out my math teacher because she's been super helpful. Um, every week, there's like a manageable amount of work. Um, all of it is in a different form. Like she'll give us a video to do and practice and this and that. And her office hours have been super helpful, which um, some of my other teachers, their office hours have been a little messier, you know, um, and it can get difficult with so many kids trying to access one teacher, but she's really been super helpful for me at least. Um, and I think my actual schedule for school is that we have to complete work uh, by technically supposed, it's supposed to be completed by Friday, our teacher, which our teachers will assign by Monday at 9 a.m. And then on Thursdays and Fridays, uh, we'll have a few classes every day. So it was supposed to be that we'll have every class for 20 minutes, Thursdays and Fridays, but obviously some teachers wanted to only do one class on one day. So right now, most of my teachers have picked Thursday, which has made it really difficult because I'll be sitting and doing this class, this class, this class, this class for the entire day. And even though there are 20 minutes, it feels a lot more exhausting than an in-person school day because I'm on my computer. I'm like sitting in my bed in the same position. I'm not doing that little walk between classes. There's not that little mental switch between classes. I've actually like entered classes speaking Spanish because I just came from my language class. It's just such a different environment that I thought my district um, hasn't really, I, I think they kind of failed on that point because I thought, it, I personally think it'd be much better if we spaced out the classes, like Samia said, um, but they're all packed into one day, which has been really uncomfortable for me. Yeah, yeah. It's all very helpful. Uh, ask me, Tarun, you want to jump in here? You totally. Would you like to go first? Oh, you can Ask go me. ahead. Awesome. You can I think that just one reflection I've had personally on my process is I've been very lucky to have teachers that schedule meetings and are very helpful with online classes, but something that I've learned from talking to other students who have like the similar curriculum, maybe taught by a different teacher, is that a lot of teachers operate very differently. And while they may have operated similarly during like a physical classroom setting, like this difference in how they're teaching online, I think will cause discrepancies on how prepared students are when they enter in the fall because one teacher might teach some amount of information one teacher might not teach as much information and I think that just there's so much like because we as a school district weren't prepared for such a situation prior there aren't really structures in place to make sure that everyone is learning everything and I think that it is a pandemic and I think that maybe making sure that everyone doesn't get an A on a math test is the first priority but I think there is a responsibility that regardless of your teacher, that you should be prepared to pass the class or be able to be proficient for the next year's class. Yeah. Ask me, you want to jump in? Yeah, um, something that was kind of like Maya said, right? Like in the beginning, everything was just kind of piling on top of each other and it was super hard to stay motivated and to finish everything. But, you know, as the weeks have gone on and the teachers have gotten feedback, um, they have become more flexible with the deadlines. So maybe I have some teachers that will assign the entire week's work on like Monday and have it due like the next Monday. And so we can kind of space out our time and organize it as much like how we'd like. And it's been helpful instead of everyone just piling on, you know, maybe just randomly everyone 
besides big assignments on a Wednesday and then the Wednesday is like packed and then it's overwhelming. So I think having um, that big gap and like having a flexible deadline has been helpful. Um, but I also know other districts where they don't really necessarily do online learning. And so they've basically just been on break ever since quarantine started. And uh, yet I think Tune is right. Like I think especially um, for people starting college next year, or even like starting senior year next year, everyone's going to be at completely different levels. And that's going to be another cha challenge in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. What about in, in terms of relationships for you? Are you feeling like you're staying connected to the school and to teachers and to the community? I think it just comes down to like, I, I, I just know for people, it's hard to reach out to teachers necessarily because I, I, I feel like I have an easier time being proactive. So I like make it a point to email my teachers, but I know a lot of friends who aren't necessarily comfortable with that. So for them, um, they maybe haven't had those one-on-one -on -one interaction or like any interaction with their teachers since school ended. But I think it has been harder because, you know, if you don't want to get in touch with them, you don't have to, like no one's enforcing that contact. But for me, I think it really does help to kind of touch bases and even just to see their faces again. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, so I, um, I, I want to also ask you about things that teachers or administrators have done well. I mean, um, you know, if you were to send a message to teachers for the fall or for now, here are some things that you've been doing that have been really helpful to us that we really want you to keep doing. What would, the, what would those things be? And Tarun, I know you and I had a, a brief conversation about this, but you want you want to start us off? Totally. I think that just that culture of empathy has been really strong with the teachers that I've been connected with. I think that something that's a shift a little bit from previously is that students and teachers are just way more cognizant of their lives and caring about each other, like asking how their day is doing or how their week is or how their family is. And for me, I think first, like that's impressive that they're asking that. But I think that's also a reflection, like why weren't these questions asked beforehand prior to a pandemic? And I think that these questions should always exist and being empathetic, empathetic and being able to connect with students is so important. And then I also think that, especially in competitive high schools or places where students feel like they're always competing against students or there's that type of hierarchy that exists. I think that this is a perfect time for administrators or teachers to change that culture and turn that tide to say, like, I think that in that way, this is a great way to start a new culture in a school. And this is a building block that I don't think we'll have another opportunity like this to significantly change a culture of a school. And I think that administrators should take a proactive step in making sure that transition occurs. Yeah, yeah. So do you have, can you say a little bit more about what that community might look like that you're hoping for, that shift that you might, that you're hoping for? Totally. I think that less of a focus net per se on grades itself. I think more of a focus on intrinsic student motivation would be great. Like I think that just switching to pass fail or getting rid of grades entirely has really brought that to light. Like what actually is motivating students in regard to their learning. So I think that teachers having a focus on motivating students for more than a grade, either for personal fulfillment or that they feel like their teacher has expectations and positive expectations for them that they're trying to reach, not necessarily, I need to get this borderline grade on this assignment in order to pass this class versus, oh, this teacher has these positive expectations for me. I have this great relationship here. I feel motivated to learn because shift here. You know, Tarun, you just froze for a second. You said your last sentence again, because I think we lost you for one second. Sorry, sorry. So my last sentence was, I think that there should be a shift from teachers focusing or students focusing on, I need to get a 90% on this, or I need to pass this class versus my teacher has positive expert expectations for me to grow. I want to learn because I want to succeed. I feel like learning in school is a positive environment for me where I feel like other students are motivators in a place of collaboration versus competition. So Mia, can I bring you in here? Do you have thoughts about what you would like to see teachers doing and things they're doing well that you'd like them to keep doing? Sure. Um, 
I really agree with what Taryn said about the grades because I feel like when I was in school before I was really stressed and overwhelmed because of all the amount of work and I was always like focused on oh my god I have to get that grade oh my god I have to do so well oh my god I have to do this and this and this but now that is quarantine and teachers has been I kind of saw which like which of my teachers were actually like trying to support us to actually like succeed in life and do our best to like achieve our goals and the teachers were actually like just oh do this because of the grade or do this because you are going to fail or if you don't do this you're going to fail and you're not going to pass and I feel like it's really awakening to see that like it's not really all about the grade and I would like to see that same energy that teachers are putting on students even when we go back like instead of like putting pressure on students because they did, they don't get the work done at a certain time instead try to talk to that to that student and try to see why they did not get that done or like try to care more about the mental health aspect of it instead of just like oh you have to get that grade or if you get like a b or a c you are not going to get anywhere in life or something like that. Instead of like focusing on that grade, focus on the human side of like the education. Yeah. That's what I would like to see continuing even if we go back to school. Hopefully when we go back to school. Yeah. Well I see Maya nodding her head. Maya, you wanna <laughs> you wanna get in here and um and I do want to ask you all though, if you don't have grades, do you have something? Do you have some way of measuring student progress or how do you think about that? Yeah, I totally agree with um, Tarun and Mia when, what they've been saying. Like, I think before quarantine, I was super stressed about my grades. Um, I think I almost burned out because I was so invested in getting um, a grade that was, you know, acceptable to the college board. And um, once shut the shutdown happened and it, we switched to pass fail for at least the term that I'm in right now, term three, um, it was this weird sort of relief where I slowly realized that there are certain classes in which I was only doing, you know, the bare like minimum yeah. uh, during the distance learning period because I wasn't motivated from by the actual learning. Um, and it's been really difficult to motivate without that, you know, letter that code that goes by your transcript yeah. because you know, at a, at a certain point, you know, if you're not invested in the learning material, then that's the only thing left to actually care about. So I think a lot of this issue stems from the college process and how competitive it is, how stressful it is, and how unhealthy it is to obsess about it. And I think to an extent, you know, it'd be nice if we could all say, no, it's fine. You don't, you don't have to worry about it, but you do have to worry about it because everyone else is worrying about it. And if you're not worrying about it when everyone else is worrying about it, then, you know, you're the odd one out and you're the one who's going to get left behind when the college process comes. Yeah. So I think that sort of mentality is what's really driving this sort of grade obsession. And I think that's really been revealed during quarantine. Yeah. Um, and I think the solution stems from the college board, not the high school. And the college board should do, should be doing what? Are you referring to the to the SAT specifically? Um, I think it's a multifaceted issue. I think less. Um, I think making schools test optional is one of the first steps, yeah. and I think getting it um, the college process to the point where it's more about you know the content of your learning. Um, I think rather than number of AP courses you took. Yeah, or, I think yeah. it's very clinical right now. So, you know, you you have that straight A transcript and then you have your 13 <laughs> extracurriculars. And I think one part of the college process that's missing is learning about the student. And obviously there are like so many kids in America and you know, you can't really get to know every student, but there's a point in which it becomes all about the numbers and it's very dehumanizing. Yeah. And so essays about the content of what students have been doing in high school, essays, uh, putting more emphasis on those essays, uh, making it less about the transcripts and the SAT and ACT scores and more about, you know, what you've done in your lifetime. Yeah, that's all very, very well put and thoughtful. Thank you. Um, 
So I want to I want to shift just we're getting a bunch of, of questions from folks out there, which I really appreciate some great questions. And I want to shift to those in a minute. But let me just ask you one more question. Are there things that have been positive about this time for you, things that you've appreciated or things that you've learned to, to appreciate during this time? And just raise your, Simi, I see you're nodding your head. You want to start? Go ahead. Sure. Um, if I would say that there's something positive about this quarantine is the time that we have and how the, all the things that we were not able to do because of school stress and like all, like Maya said, the, the college applications um, or the, the extracurriculars, like the fact that we are now just at home, give us time to think about ourselves. Like mm -hmm. Asti said that she's getting more sleep. I'm getting more sleep as well. And I'm so happy about it. It's like, oh my God, finally I have like a six hour night and I don't rush to finish my homework. How good can I be? And I have time to maybe like reflect on myself, write more poetry, spend more time with my family, cooking and stuff. It kind of like gives that space of like, okay, I don't have to rush. Dial down, just, yeah. Yeah, just dial, dial, your, dial your life down. Just to, exactly. Yeah. Reset. Think more, pause, yeah. Like, exactly, and just like being thankful and grateful for what we have, just being thankful for being just in a great health and being like, okay, I'm, in, I'm alive. I have a house where I can sleep. Yeah. Everything is fine. I mean, not everything fast, but like it could be worse. So it kind of like makes us like appreciate more our teachers, our lives and like how our parents might be working hard outside for us as well. If you have like social parents are working outside as well. So I feel yeah. like it's just really like a, not such a great time, but we can find positive in it. Okay. Ask me, you want to jump in? Yeah, for sure. I think that time is now more precious than ever. Now we get to appreciate it. And I just think that it's, it's kind of funny because, you know, when we did have to go to school, I, I dreaded it. I honestly did not like going to school. I would always complain like, why do I have to go to school? But now I am actually looking forward to starting school again because I didn't, I guess I took it for granted because like the little exchanges I had with my teachers or my students or not my students, but my peers, I really do miss that. And so I think when school does start again, I think I will definitely be more thankful for that. And also like, I'm, I was thinking about this and I, we're so lucky to have this pandemic happen, well, not to have this pandemic happen, but have it happen right now. Because if this were to happen in a period without technology or like if, if it were to happen in a place where people weren't, you know, we're still, then that would be a completely different picture. You know, we couldn't have these interactions. We couldn't learn as much as we do now. Like life would pause even more than it seems to have now. So I'm honestly really thankful for technology and the fact that it has happened now because I think we've come to a point where we can actually grow from it and extract those positive things instead of being kind of hindered by the negative negativity. So, yeah. Great. Um, all right, we have a bunch of questions. I could talk to you all forever, but we have a bunch of questions from the audience and I wanna make sure these are some really interesting questions. I wanna make sure we get to the audience questions. Um, first question, how is this affecting your future plans? How are you planning for the future while navigating a lot of uncertainty now, especially for Tarun perhaps as a, as a 12th grader? Um, Tarun, you wanna start with this, but others of you may wanna jump in and you know, Maya, you're a, you're a sophomore, but you, all of you may have thoughts about this. Totally. I th think that first and foremost, I think that just in the college search in general, it's been very difficult. Like I was able to get an extension from the colleges that I was accepted for, for which like one I would have to accept. But I think that one of the things that makes it very difficult is not being able to visit that, like the campuses or talk to the students like you normally would makes it very difficult because just talking to the students from previous years, like the difference between choosing school X over school Y was admitted students day like going on campus or just talking in the student body to get that feel so you don't necessarily get that anymore and I think that a lot of students have reiterated that they're waiting until the last second to make a deposit or just are very uncertain about where they're going to enroll second is finances I think that for a lot of students like in particular just the situation has disrupted so much with like 33, three, 33 million and over like unemployed. It just changed a lot in that scope of where should I go in that regard and what's investment for that money. And then finally, I think that 
just changing how students are thinking about college in particular in terms of how much is it worth as an investment or what are your plans for the future? Because I think that now more than ever, I think students are really asking that question to themselves and their parents are asking that question, like, what do you want to do later in life and what you want to achieve? And I think that especially now under like financial burden, I think that a lot of students are getting started to asking that question where they might've been undeclared on what major they would have been in. They're trying to be more critical on, do I have a focus? How could I pursue that? And most importantly, how important is going to college in that trajectory and what other alternatives there are. Me or us, me, you want to to jump in here? You can just raise your hand. Go ahead, Asmi. Yeah, so I'm a junior and this is like normally the time where, you know, we're in this testing season and also like starting college apps and stuff. And so there's always, we've always kind of had this template almost to follow. Like we feel like each second semester junior year is going to be the time where, you know, it's the grind season. Everyone's working, everyone's working towards this like, Face and I think we've always been working towards this critical time. And now that it's here, everything's just kind of back at square zero. And it's definitely caused a lot of uncertainty, but I think now that I, after AP testing at least, I'm going to be starting to, you know, investigate colleges more. But I do think it's good that a lot of colleges have actually opened up a lot of virtual platforms, which makes it more accessible for people who might have not been able to visit those earlier. So yeah, like I've been to a couple virtual informational sessions to explore colleges that I wouldn't no- wouldn't have normally toured or gotten a chance to kind of hear from the admissions um, director from. And it's in that regard, it has been kind of nice. But again, it's starting at square zero. We don't really know what's going to happen next. And we're just kind of all on the same boat. Yeah. Samir, Maya, you want to you hear your thoughts about this? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, for me, um normally this time is kind of like as you said like college applications it's like SATs tests um college essay so those are all being just like disrupted because now it's kind of like they canceled the SAT so it's kind of like we're going to take it maybe like in August or some colleges are like dropping it completely for that year so I would say it's kind of messed up and it's kind of complicated to kind of keep up with everything and try to get as much as much things done because like at that time I will be writing my college essay in class like in school but now I kind of have to work on it on my own and kind of get like all my sources together so it's definitely I would say a bigger challenge but it's pretty great that colleges are actually giving the options to students to like have visits online and like more information through like technology so that's a great side of it yeah great so we're getting, um, we're getting, we probably have time for one more question. Um, we're getting questions about uh, your advice for, for parents or for adults. And I don't want you to talk about your own parents, but are, th- are there things that just general advice you have um, for parents and other adults during this time about ways that they can make your lives <laughs> easier, better, more fulfilling? Yeah, go ahead, Sylvia. Um, I will say, I feel like a lot of parents are misunderstanding this whole, like, learning thing, like, online learning. It's not because we are at home that we are not working, or it's not because we're just, like, look at home, like, chilling, or on a computer on our phones, that it's just, like, we're lazy or something. So I would say to parents, go easy on your on your children. It's not easy for us either. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of, like, disruption and we are not used to being on computer we're not used to like work all on our own for stuff so like don't be mad at us if we are not waking up at like 6 a.m and cleaning the whole house like you want us to do it's a lot of work on our shoulders as well and also like be considerate and try to get into work try to understand how it works for for your um, your children like get involved try to say oh do you need any help with that or like oh how's it going just try to check in on them because it's definitely draining emotionally for us as well as it is physically they gotta be part of the motivation team too yeah yeah any, anybody else want to jump in on this one 
Yeah, I'd say that I think that one thing that I just realized that just talking to my sister and other people is that one size doesn't necessarily fit all in terms of how students are coping and how they learn. And I think that finding that balance with your own parents or with your child is super important. Because I think there's general guidelines that the internet has like, oh, you should connect or you should talk about grades or you should like help them with homework. But I think that each student is reacting differently. And I think that just something that really I think that needs to be hit home is that there's not one size that fits all. There's not one plan that's for every student. And just having something that is unique and intentional is the most important part. I think that intentional aspect is super key. It's not that you're doing it because you think it's right or that you think you should do it, rather because it's coming from a place of empathy and care and that intent matters so much. Yeah, that's very well put. Maya, did you want, did you want to add something here? Um, yeah, sort of like what uh, Samia said, um, it's really difficult to be productive. I've found, um, I'm tr <laughs> I think everyone's trying their best to find a new skill or a new hobby, you know, read a new book, but it's a very scary time. And I think sort of managing both school being so different than it was before and, you know, a global health situation, um, and f having to better yourself during this time is just like way too many things to handle. So just like uh, Samia said, go easy on your kid. Um, just be there to support them through it. Like they're having a lot, um, they're, they're having a difficult time as well. It's not like they don't suffer from the stress of the pandemic, you know, we all are suffering under that stress. Mm -hmm. um, so just be there for your kid. Don't yell at them if they're not productive. It's really difficult to motivate. Yeah, yeah. This is what wise advice. Listen, we're getting, we're just, we, we keep getting questions. So I'm going to try and squeeze in one more because we're getting a number of questions about online learning. I, I wanted just to come back to it for a minute. Is there anything, one question, is there anything related to remote learning that you think we should keep going into next year? Um, and there's also a question about particular platforms, Google Classroom, Zoom Meets, D2L, I don't, I don't even know what that is, but um, are, are, are there platforms that you think are better than others? Anyone want to take this one up? Um, yeah, I think something that has been kind of working that I think would be nice to kind of keep going are my teachers who've done online lectures. And I think it's because if it's in a video, it's easier to kind of, you know, rewind it, watch it as many times you need to, to kind of grasp the concept. And, you know, in class lectures are great too, but sometimes, you know, you can't always hit rewind if there's a part that you missed or something. So I think just that video aspect of it has been really helpful, especially for like my math class. And so I really enjoy having those kind of references and being able to go back to them whenever I need to. Yeah. Anyone else have a quick thought about this before we wind, wind up? Go ahead, go ahead, Matt. Um, shortened class time has actually been um, very helpful for me at least. Um, I know that it's really difficult to teach in 20 minutes, uh, so I'm definitely not <laughs> suggesting that at all, but um, I think it's really difficult to keep your attention for like an hour or an hour and a half. Um, so having, you know, maybe a 45 minute class, something that's a little bit shorter that um, you can do more classwork outside of the actual classroom and keep that sort of attention of your students so you can do more actual teaching rather than doing worksheets in person. Um, and I also think later start times because my school- Sleep, sleep is a big theme here. I, I, we, yeah. I, yeah. This has really shown me how much sleep I was actually missing, you know, with all the homework that we get, I always go to bed way later than I should and having a little extra time to sleep in makes up for that. So I think definitely uh, pushing school later. Uh, my Zoom meetings uh, start at 10 a.m., which uh, I think has been very healthy for me and has made me a lot uh, more cognizant of how much I'm sleeping per day and um, managing that. So that's what I'd say. Thank you all. So to me, I'm sorry. I, I would love to get you in, but we, we're really, we're about 10 minutes over. Oh, <laughs> over. sure. You know, Sunny, you want you, is it is it quick? You want to say something quickly? Oh yeah, yeah. I was just about to say that um, 
even though we don't ex extend like the um, school light hour and get a letter, I think that trying to like make teachers communicate with like with each other to like have homework kind of decrease or actually have like a manageable amount of homework so that they don't give us too much because they're the ones who says oh you should sleep well you should eat more but we don't have any time for that because of the amount of work that they give us so mm -hmm. i feel like also having communication between teachers of like how much work they actually give each other like us so they can manage that more yeah this is a great point thank you um okay we we do have to wind up now as usual we're going to provide a couple of takeaways um from this conversation uh, and here they and here they are. For teachers, students find comfort in connecting with you, even if they don't initiate. Reach out to students, especially those whom you haven't heard from. Step into student shoes for an authentic connection. Express empathy. How, ask how they and their families are doing. Um, looking ahead to learning after the crisis, educators should continue to tap into student motivation to drive their educational success rather than prioritizing grades and test scores and numbers of AP courses and extracurricular activities. These are great takeaways. Um, you all are terrific. I really, really appreciate you doing this. I learned a ton and um, it, was, it was really helpful and thank you. And um, I'm just really impressed with how thoughtful you are about all this. We do have this somewhat corny tradition of giving the high fives. So I'm gonna give you the high, the, the high fives if we can figure out how to do that, like this way, this way, this way. High fives to all of you um, who, are, who are listening. Thank you to all the audience for the great questions. I'm sorry we didn't get to all the questions, but these were wonderful questions. I wanna thank you all, all for joining the conversation. We'll keep taking your questions on Facebook. Stay in touch and check out hgse.me slash ednow to rewatch this and find out about future episodes. Take care, everyone, and stay well.